Okay, we're talking about this topic about writing an apology letter as an acting exercise. Now, there's a major choice to make here. There's two different ways to do this. You can write an, an apology letter as, an, as a part of an imaginary circumstance that you set up and there's some key components to being able to build up relationships to be able to have that work well. And then there's the other way is that you can write an apology letter based off of real life um, stimulus. Things that were actually stuff that would be close to stuff that is actually in your life, right? Now look, nobody needs to know any of this stuff at all. I mean, sometimes people know, end up knowing stuff but the reality is, it's nobody's business. It's really not. And this is part of the actor's uh, plight, the, the actor's um, discovery of self in acting. We're in a situation where we're, where we're literally in a, in a construct where we're building up our acting muscles, being able to work with our feelings, working on our raw talent to be able to pour out of us. Now, if we end up using writing with a pen and a paper to be able to achieve that, that's perfect. And, you know, you could also work on this, and there's a video on it, that's the eulogy letter writing exercise. And that is a very, very common, common exercise in the acting classes where you will literally believe that your uh, loved one has actually passed away. And it, it could has to be something, obviously, a meaningful relationship to really make that activation work. There are these programs that I use, and I use these programs to do these things like cartoons, to be able to accentuate, to, to, ex, to absolutely um, amplify the emotions that I go through. And when I go through emotions, first of all, I absolutely emotionally prepare, sometimes even before the videos, because I, I love emotional preparation. I love to be able to get myself upset about one thing, get myself upset about another, and then put that into some imaginary work. And these cartoons, there's links in the descriptions below, and they can absolutely, they can amplify those expressions that you can learn to be able to get with your talent. Okay, so feel free, use those links. So there's another component to this though that you can do that's clever. This is a clever little technique. You can use this thing called what ifs. And then you can craft based off of the relationship with somebody in real life, the ability to believe a what if. Now, you have already a solid relationship with people, right? If you do, you have something that's solid with people and you're working with this solid relationship and you know that if you go and write a eulogy letter that you've got all this emotion pouring out, right? And so what happens is you can still use those relationships that you use for your acting class or for your um, emotional preparations on the, on the sets then you can literally use that um, to be able to work and work with apology letters. Now what kind of things could you apologize for? All, all kinds. There is really no limit. You can really sit and, and brainstorm based on what type of relationship that you have with the person. So let's say you have a close, close friend. You have a close, close friend and you've never ever let them that close friend down and that's your real life circumstance you have a very good friend you've always been there for them if you have ever had a problem they've been there for you and your and your besties right I think they call it besties or something like that they, so you get your best best friends and you you work with that and then you work with the talent of your imagination to see if there's one item that you can brainstorm that can be clever enough of a what if that you could actually believe. What if there was a time that you could imagine a what if that you uh, would abandon your good good friend. 
could be something, right? You could, you could brainstorm something. Now, this apology letter could be any kind of thing. I'm just making a simple, simple analogy, an example. And please, keep brainstorming as you're listening to me. This is great. It's a great thing to be able to brainstorm these, these items. So let's say you disappointed your best, best friend and went with another friend to this um, uh, award ceremony, right? And this was something that you knew, like you both had plans to go to this award ceremony. This whole thing was like this whole thing where you wanted to show up together. There was this whole thing that was very close and there's this whole thing that you guys had planned. And then, but you can believe in your talent that there was a distraction that caused you not to go to the event with the person. Instead, you went alone with someone else. Or you went, not, went alone, you went with somebody else. So you didn't go with your friend. And then that's a scenario that you would need to write an apology letter for. Hi, I'm inviting you to actually join me live on the internet. And uh, if you would, you can bring your own emotional preparation. We can work on emotional preparation together and we can really hone down and help build out that talent with inside of you. Now, even if all it is, is you wanna just bring an emotional preparation, do a spoon river, I don't mind. Come, join us and absolutely practice the talent of your own acting. So if you fall into that belief, now some people, this may not work, um, this exact example, Maybe you need a, another example, like, um, hmm. let's say you had uh, friends that had um, more than one house, right? They had two houses or three houses, and they gave you the keys to the house, and uh, now you have good friends in your life, right? You have a good friend in your life, you, they, you actually share keys with whatever, and that's actually something that you do, and you do that to help yourselves out, to make sure that, that people have access and the places looked after, et cetera, right? And this is something that's, that's a real relationship. So can you believe a what if that you had uh, decided through influence of another person, but you're still responsible, that, um, that they convinced you to have a party at their property? and you decided to go ahead and have a party at their property, and then there became this thing called property damage at the party, and you're a little short to be able to cover that property damage, and you're gonna have to tell them, and on top of this, you're really honest, so you wouldn't fix something that was broken, and you have no idea if it's sentimental meaning to them or not sentimental meaning. So this is a what if, right? So we have the real relationship on this side, then we have a what if. Could you sit down and write a letter, an apology letter, and, and craft a letter to them and apologize? Now, by the way, this is an independent activity, what I just described. You can do both of these things as separate independent activities and in classes. Pretty cool. So the reality is, is you sit down and you write a letter to your friend and you've got to get it in the mail by a certain time if you're doing this as an independent activity. And it's got to be as heartfelt as possible because you can't just call them up. There's circumstances you've got to get this in the letter and then uh, that's the way it has to be. So you, you're working at writing an apology letter to basically having a party at your friend's property without letting them know. Now, this is a realistic thing. It's realistic. Some people would be able to identify with that. You know, nothing makes me happier than seeing people actually open themselves up to their emotions and actually work with their emotions and have those be external. But another thing that would make me happy is if you open up that description box. There are links in that description that you could actually use to improve your acting. You can help, to, it can help you to improve your creativity. Okay, so the other thing that you can do, which is a little bit harder, you could work on this stuff that I have that's called building an imaginary relationships. 
right? Now there's reasons why we build out imaginary relationships. This isn't, this is an acting exercise. This is the way to be able to connect prior to a whole bunch of auditions or pilot season or whatever heck it is that you're working on. You can connect a whole bunch of emotional preparations into this stuff and you can work with imaginary relationships. So you're working with this construct of imaginary relationships. And you build out this construct of imaginary relationships. Now, if you're capable of doing that, if you're capable of building out an imaginary relationship, let's say um, you build up, which is a smart idea to do, you build up an idea of having an imaginary daughter or a wife, right? But let's just say you have an imaginary daughter. Now, you have an imaginary daughter and you work on that and you have that imaginary relationship set up for yourself so that you can always use that component in your acting. If there's a script there, then you can use the component of imaginary daughter and you know exactly kind of a ballpark of what you can do and that's very believable. It works for you. It's actually like, you know, there's some circumstances to be able to build up on that. So there are, are um, independent activities. There are reasons at the door. There's lists of programs. There's um, a list of emotions. There's programs that you can do, and there's also ways that you can actually contact me for private coaching. So listen, please, do yourself a favor and check that out, you know, right down there in the description box. And I would suggest highly, if you're gonna build up something about an imaginary daughter, uh, and you wanna make it more believable for yourself, and this is my personal advice, is that you want to um, include the concept of artificial insemination. Go and, and, and work with um, that you, you literally, I mean, had an ex that literally went and artificially inseminated themselves and you got a daughter. And it's believable, it's believable, and maybe that will be something that opens you up to being able to imagine relationships, right? You're able to imagine relationships. Um, it could have been um, a number of things, but that's one way. So you're working with imaginary daughter. Now, then you've got that imaginary daughter relationship set up, and then you go to find a what if. What if you really disappointed, you didn't show up to her, um, I don't know, uh, I don't know, 16th birthday party or whatever number, right? And you didn't show up, and that was um, a situation that was just heartbreaking for that daughter. And the imaginary daughter, now look, when you're dealing with these things like imaginary people in acting, you can go really deep and add all sorts of emotional preparations to this stuff, and you can like literally have it be activating to you as an actor, uh, in some cases um, just as strong, and some cases even stronger than real life. You could really develop you know, that kind of reality in your work so that when you look and go, you know, you get a script and you get told that you have a daughter, you go, yeah, okay, I, I know what that's, I know some of what that would be like. I know that that would be, there would be elements, you know, or maybe you helped uh, parent um, somebody for a few years um, when you're having a relationship with somebody else or friends with somebody else. And those are kinds of elements that you can pull into there. You can construct it in a way that works. So then you work with that way that then you sit down and you really craft that what if as to what, what, what was really the cause of you actually not being able to attend her 16th birthday, right? And then you sit down as an independent activity that you could be doing in front of the class, not in front of the class, or just as your own, right? As an actual apology letter acting exercise. And you sit down and you start writing out the apology to, her, to, to, the, to the daughter. So you're working with an imagination. You're working with an imaginary daughter, but you're getting real activation. So look, let me know if this is helpful. I know it's a little, it's a little un, um, con, con, conventional. It's not really conventional, but the reality is, is that this is a strong technique to be able to use for your acting. 
because it actually works. There's an ability for you to be able to have this thing that, that you preset. You preset your emotional preparations around a circumstance. You're able to go into your imaginary circumstance of having whatever a relationship you've set up and then you activate something else with it, it works. It's simple enough, it's a couple steps to it, but it's definitely, definitely doable. And it can definitely work to then be able to get enough work activated in you and get yourself worked up enough to then sit down and have to write an apology letter and actually mean every word that you're writing on that apology letter. So, you know, if you take that footage of you writing an apology letter and you write down and you compare that to somebody in real life in a similar circumstance, you should not be able to see much of a difference. And that's the goal. So look, if you would, boop the like button and um, um, what else? Um, you know, just let me know uh, what it is that could be most helpful uh, most immediately and I'm going to continue to get stuff done and get a lot of work done. Okay? Until next time. Okay, so I teach people how to get upset. I have a lot of fun teaching people how to literally, purposefully upset themselves. Actually waking their own activations up so that they're emotionally activated. There's something that they can get upset about within a ballpark of emotion. But the key, the absolute key, is I don't want you to carry around that stuff in your life. That's what's called acting baggage. You want to be able to learn a technique. I have to be able to tell you that it would be a disservice for me to teach you all of these incredible techniques on how to access yourself as an artist without reminding you very nicely that you don't need your acting baggage in life. So feel free, work on processes where you have a release time after you're doing your acting. And what this will do is it will actually amplify your work because it will give your acting muscles the break that they need in order to get the rest that they need so that your work will be even stronger.